Welcome to those who just joined us. We're going to start a new session with two presentations. Um, for the first, uh, we welcome Lucas, who comes to us from the CT University of New York, and who will be showing us to how to extract the massively multilingual pronunciation dictionary from Wiktionary. Uh, Lucas, I leave it to you. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I am Lucas Ashby from the Cooney Graduate Center in New York City. Um, I will be speaking entirely in English throughout this presentation. I took, you know, a year of French in sixth grade. It was quite some time ago. Don't really want to embarrass myself with uh, trying to do that. Um, so you may have noticed that I am not Dr. Kyle Gorman. I believe Dr. Kyle Gorman, the good doctor, is with us today, but was unable to give the presentation. Uh, so I am doing so. But who am I? Well, I'm not a doctor, but I am a PhD student, um, as I mentioned, at the Cooney Graduate Center, um, and a Wikibron contributor. Uh, Wikibron is what I'm here to discuss today. It is a tool for mining pronunciation data from Wiktionary, uh, something that I'm sure you're all familiar with. Wiktionary, that is. Uh, and Wikibron is also a sort of database or a library of the pronunciation data uh, that was mined using Wikiprom. Okay, so the goals of today's talk are kind of to discuss the motivations for creating Wikiprom, describe its design a little bit, uh, discuss some of the things that we're currently working on, and some of the things that we struggled with while creating Wikiprom, uh, and also to mention a few of the things that Wikiprom has been used for. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. Um, this is the sort of original paper available on the ACL anthology website that kind of announced the creation of Wikipron. I'll summarize the contents of the paper, uh, but the sort of scale and functionality of Wikipron have uh, increased since the writing of that paper. And I'll discuss a bit today about what's been added to Wikipron in the last year or year and a half since that paper was written. Um, as you might be able to tell, I assume you guys can see my mouse. Uh, Wikipron is a product of the uh, Cooney Graduate Center, and in particular, the sort of computational linguistics lab at the Cooney Graduate Center. Uh, a lot of master's and PhD students from the Graduate Center have contributed to Wikipron, but also people from other academic institutions or individuals who have no particular affiliation with the academic institution have also contributed. Uh, the project Wikipron is hosted on GitHub, uh, and we'll have some links to it at the end of the presentation. And it's totally free and open source. Anyone is willing to request features or contribute. Um, and if that's something that interests you, then you know, please feel free to check us out. Um, so the motivations for creating Wikiprom. The sort of central motivation is to attempt to contribute toward resolving a relatively obvious problem. Pronunciation dictionaries are a sort of key part of many speech and language technologies, but they're expensive to create and maintain, and free, large, high-quality dictionaries are only available for a small number of languages. And this is a problem. Open source or open vocabulary speech applications that rely on machine learning obviously need some pronunciation data. So it'd be nice if that was easier to come by. Uh, you know, in fact, it'd be great if we had free, large, high-quality pronunciation dictionaries for many languages. Um, and in a way, such a thing already exists, and it's called uh, Wiktionary. A typical sort of Wiktionary page looks like this, uh, which I assume this audience is, is very familiar with. Um, there are sort of hundreds of thousands of pages just like this, which describe uh, a word case decimate and give some pronunciation information regarding that word. Um, sort of these pages contain actually quite a lot more information than just a word mispronunciation. There's all sorts of lexical and etymological information available as well. Uh, and it's great that this information is present on Wikipron or on Wiktionary. Uh, but what would be even better 
is if instead of being present on a web page, it was on your computer uh, in some uh, more accessible sort of machine readable format, such as a TSV. Uh, so that's basically the narrow goal of Wikipron is to take these pieces of information, the word and its pronunciation, um, and put them on your command line or in some file uh, that you would like to output them to, whatever file you desire. Um, so Wikipron is a command line tool. You tell it what language you want to create a pronunciation dictionary of, and it goes to Wiktionary, the English Wiktionary, uh, and takes this information and returns it to your command line or, or to whatever output file you would like it to. Um, so we are not sort of the first people to have come up with this idea of using Wiktionary as a data source. Others have had a similar idea and scraped Wiktionary in order to generate pronunciation data. Um, Schlippe et al. in 2010 did so, and Deary and Knight in 2016 did so, uh, but neither of the two approaches discussed on this slide um, released both the pronunciation data that was scraped uh, as well as the software that was used to scrape that data. Uh, and that's something that we wanted to do with Wikipron, which I'll explain a bit more about why we wanted to do that in a moment. Um, so we wanted to use Wiktionary as our data source, but that means that you know, all the pronunciation dictionaries we're creating are from user inputted transcriptions or from user created uh, modules, which produce automatic transcriptions. Uh, and for certain purposes, uh, that meant that um, the data needed to be, I guess, cleaned up or filtered a little bit, which is a process that we'll get into or I'll describe uh, in a moment. So with an eye toward using Wiktionary as a data source, we created Wikipron, which is an open source library for mining pronunciations from Wiktionary. Uh, it has sort of two sides, a scraper side and a library or database side. So one can use Wikipron directly or uh, to scrape data from Wiktionary or access data returned by running the big scrape, which is uh, basically running the Wikipron scraper over every language on Wiktionary that has more than 100 entries. Uh, we run the big scrape at least twice annually. And right now it's a database of 3.1 million word pronunciation pairs and 337 languages, dialects, and scripts, both living and dead. And all the contents of that library are available on our GitHub page. So one of the sort of core features of the design of uh, Wiktionary is that it's dynamic, uh, and that the code used to generate it is open source. A lot of linguistic resources are generated once and then released, uh, you know, maybe cleaned up a little bit, uh, and then either not updated at all or sort of updated in a closed environment. Uh, because the code used to generate them is not released. So there's no real sort of mechanism for requesting uh, corrections or, or making corrections or requesting new features. Uh, you know, it's sort of worrying for someone getting into the field of computational linguistics that so many great linguistic resources are hosted on websites that are sort of becoming increasingly old, you know, with like ASCII art or just very old web pages. Um, and these are these are useful resources, but they're they're you know have a whole bunch of dead links, and it's just not not maintained particularly well. Um, were they open source projects? Obviously, that could be uh, alleviated in some fashion. Um, so those are these are things that we wanted to include within Wikipedia. It's free and open source. Everyone has access to it. They can request whatever features they want. They can fork it change its behavior completely. Uh, and we've maintained it for two years and I believe we'll continue to do so. Uh, so if we look at some pronunciation entries on Wiktionary, ones at the top here are from Portuguese and the ones at the bottom here are from Spanish. Uh, we can see that they themselves contain uh, quite a lot of information that may or may not be useful. Uh, there's sort of some dialect information here between these parentheses. 
can see that the format of these pronunciations actually differs between Portuguese and Spanish. Um, so there's some dialect information in these parentheses. There's stress marking, uh, syllable boundaries. Um, we have both phonetic and phonemic forms for the Spanish pronunciations. Uh, it'd be great if a user could specify whether or not to include this information. You know, if they don't care about syllable boundaries, then it'd be great if we remove the syllable boundaries for them. Um, you know, does a user want data only from Brazilian Portuguese? Uh, do they not care about the dialect? These are all options that we wanted to give the user. Uh, and, you know, it turns out that users also have very specific needs. And so we've added a bunch of features to help people get the data in their, in their desired form. Uh, also, you know, uh, the sort of default scrape just gives you everything. Uh, some people want that as well. Uh, some of the major sort of uh, scraping features that we've added are you can target whether you want narrow phonetic transcriptions or broad phonemic transcriptions. Uh, you can specify whether or not those transcriptions should include stress markings or syllable boundaries or tones. You can specify whether you want those transcriptions to be segmented, meaning white space has been added between each phone in that transcription. Uh, we rely actually on a, another open source package called Segments to do this. Uh, and it's sort of, so it's kind of intelligent segmentation. It's keeping the aspiration diacritic here with the phone that it applies to. Um, you can specify the dialects that you want to scrape whether you're interested in dialects or not, whether you want everything or only languages from a spe specific dialect. And finally, you can specify whether or not you want to case fold the head word, the you know, graphemic form of the word, uh, which was decimate in the example that we looked at, looked at earlier. Uh, so that's the scraping side. Uh, on the database side, or the library side, we apply our scraper uh, to all languages with over 100 entries, as I said, kind of a arbitrary choice there um, and produce sort of a handy table um, uh, that hopefully can direct people to their TSV of interest. It includes uh, some information regarding um, the contents of that TSV. Obviously the language, uh, whether or not uh, this is a filtered or non-filtered TSV. Um, and we'll discuss filtering in a second whether it's phonetic or phonemic or narrow versus broad, whether case folding has been applied, and the number of word prawn pairs or word pronunciation pairs that are present in that TSV. Um, now we apply a, a few features by default to all languages. So by default, uh, all words are case folded and all transcriptions are segmented with stress and syllable boundaries removed. And so the TSVs generally look something like this. There are some languages that, that have uh, sort of more bespoke settings. Uh, but all languages have uh, case folding, segmentation, and stress and syllable boundaries removed. Uh, beyond this step, though, the data in the library sort of diverges a little bit from what you get when running a regular scrape, or what's possible to get by running a regular scrape. Um, we have a couple of post-processing steps. So uh, we have a kind of orthographic script detection system, which we use to split up languages uh, which use multiple scripts like Servo Pro app. Uh, and we have a sort of data filtering system, which allows us to produce uh, alternate filtered TSVs uh, so for specific languages, not for all languages, but for uh, specific languages. And both of these post-processing steps are sort of features that we've added uh, as a part of kind of quality assurance work, which we've been doing for the last year or so. You know, when you scrape Wiktionary, you get what's on Wiktionary and you get it how it's sort of organized on Wiktionary. Uh, and depending on your purposes, some of that stuff might not be useful. The way it's organized may not, may not be useful to you, it may even be detrimental to what you want to do with that data. Uh, so we sort of endeavor with this database or library to provide the data uh, that is on Wiktionary with the scraping features uh, mentioned in this top bullet point here. Uh, as well as sort of filtered copies uh, that are, we think, a good fit for graphing to phoneme work in that language. Um, so why uh, are we interested 
I guess what, why did we originally come up with the idea of, of filtering the data that we're getting from Wiktionary? Well, it's because of entries like, uh, like this. This is the English pronunciation listed for the word Bach, which I just pronounced as a sort of American from the West Coast. Um, there are two pronunciations listed here. Both of them are you know, legitimate pronunciations. Um, I suppose if you're from Germany, really only one of them is a legitimate pronunciation, but um, what's sort of um, strange about this is unlike what the transcription would lead us to believe, or would seem to claim this velar fricative is you know, not a phoneme in English. Uh, and so its inclusion uh, may kind of, I suppose, dilute your model to some extent. Uh, so if you do a sort of broad phonemic scrape of English using Wikipron, uh, you'll end up with a lot more phonemes than you might expect in your, your language of choice, uh, a lot more phonemes than you might be familiar with as a native speaker of that language. So the sort of way that we attempt to um, filter the scrape is by creating what we call kind of phone phones lists phone lists um, which are kind of exactly what they sound like they're handwritten lists of permitted phones um, we create sort of alternate tsvs that are constructed uh, solely to contain word prong or word pronunciation pairs where the pronunciation is composed entirely of permitted phones. Uh, so a, a phone list looks something like this. It's, as you might expect, just basically a text file, each permitted phone on a separate line. Um, so long as the uh, transcription is composed of phones entirely from this list, it makes its way into the filter TSV. Uh, this one is, I think, for classical Latin. Uh, and these are sort of written by individuals who are linguistically knowledgeable uh, of the language or, or just by people who don't speak the language but are doing their best to understand the phonology of the language. Um, all right, so here are some of the challenges that we've had scraping Wiktionary uh, and producing a sort of dynamic resource. Uh, most of the languages on Wiktionary use the same underlying HTML structure for their entries. Uh, those that don't require bespoke extraction functions, which is what we call them, it's basically just language specific, uh, sort of specialized HTML parsing. But any changes to Wiktionary or the underlying HTML of a particular language on Wiktionary often leads to entire scraping failure. Um, and a majority of development time on Wikipron has been dedicated to handling these sort of edge cases and these exceptions. Um, we try to write extraction functions to handle the differences in the HTML underlying entries in various languages. So, you know, this is a time consuming process. You might do a, a big scrape, which itself takes two weeks perhaps, and then find that uh, you didn't scrape any Japanese data. So you have to come up with a extraction function, which is quite time consuming in order to target the correct word pronunciation pair on Japanese pages. And then you find after having written that extraction function two weeks later, they've updated uh, all Japanese entries again and your extraction function is broken and you know, it's back to square one. Um, it's actually, it actually happened to us. Uh, these problems are not necessarily fixed by working off of these sort of XML or SQL dumps that Wikimedia makes available. I didn't personally look into this, but I think you encounter basically the same problems uh, with differences among templates. Um, so any, any sort of upstream modifications to Wiktionary can be a, a bit of a headache for us. Uh, but on top of that, you know, one problem that we now have is it's nice to say that we're scraping over 300 languages and we have a database of over 3.1 million word pronunciation pairs, but that's kind of too much data for people who are working on this in their spare time to actually audit and, and look through. Um, so often, you know, things will be broken. Um, 
maybe Armenian changes the way it's describing its dialects or, or structuring them. And we might not notice for weeks, right? Um, there's just simply too much data. And this is, I guess, kind of a broader problem in producing vast multilingual resources. Like I've, I've written extraction functions for Vietnamese and, and Minan. Those are two languages that I have really no understanding of. Uh, I can look at the data as it's coming in and spot check it to make sure it's reflecting what's on Wiktionary. Uh, but I cannot vouch for the quality of the data. And you know, my spot checking is, is limited at best. There might be very obvious things that I'm missing. Um, so we really need, we are in New York City. So we, you know, there's people speaking all sorts of languages here, which is great. Uh, but we really do need people from all around the world to help us out on this project uh, when it comes to validating the data. Um, one way we've sort of done that is by hosting these uh, shared tasks. We've done two of them now, Sigmorphon, uh, one in 2020 and one this year, 2021. Uh, last year, we organized one focused on graphing to phoneme convert conversion. Uh, here's the paper related to that. Uh, it was uh, basically, uh, we gave people, I think, 2,500 uh, word pronunciation pairs from these languages, a split among training test and, and development data. The goal being, being basically to do the best on the testing data. Um, we received 23 submissions from nine different teams, eight of which submitted a, a system summary, six, six of which beat the baseline. Uh, the winning IMS team achieved a 3% absolute, 18% relative reduction in word error rate over simple neural networks baseline. So quite impressive. Um, the purpose sort of of doing these shared tasks was one, to get the word out about Wiktionary and two, to sort of try and demonstrate that the data obtained via, uh, data obtained via Wiktionary was uh, useful for graphing to phoneme work. Uh, and so we've posted another shared task this year, which is in its final stages now, the results of which I think are forthcoming. Um, and this one included all of the sort of quality assurance work that we've done over the last year, because one of the results of the first shared task was exposure of uh, quite a lot of problems in the languages that we used. Um, so we've been working on that quality assurance stuff, uh, but for this test, we also use new languages and uh, a low, medium and high resource task, which was uh, something that was requested in the first, in the 2020 task as well as a much stronger neural network baseline. So we'll see when the results of that come out. I think things should be hitting the presses sometime this month, if I'm not mistaken. Um, what are we up to these days? Uh, well, work continues. Um, sort of primary thing is the construction of phones lists. We currently only have 38 of them. Um, I mean, the quality assurance work in sort of all of its guises continues, but phones lists are easy for individuals who know the language to construct and they're sort of wildly effective. Um, so uh, it, it was, it'd be, be great to have a lot more of those. Um, we're also working on some sort of core uh, Wikipron problems um, relating to the scraper. One is the addition of a sub-dialect flag or just some method for handling dialects within dialects, like you see here, again, an entry from Portuguese. We have a Brazilian dialect and then three sub-dialects within the Brazilian dialects. Uh, Wikipron is currently sort of blind to these sub-dialects. Um, I believe it will extract these four transcriptions uh, and put them all in the Brazilian Portuguese TSV, uh, which is not granular enough for for some users, they would rather uh, that not occur. So that's something that we need to handle. And also, you know, one of the problems of, as mentioned before, working with this much data is um, it's very hard to tell when things are broken. So we need to sort of develop a better way of evaluating the consequences of making change to the, making changes to the scraping module. There are a few problems that we're facing now, which could be solved by uh, modifying the default behavior of the scraper. But that's a very you know, risky thing to do. It's worked for us for default behavior has worked for us for the last two years, changing it now. Who knows what the consequences would be? 
Um, so it'd be great if we had some way of inspecting those consequences before running the big scrape and then manually inspecting the results and, or just hoping for the best. Uh, and then another uh, sort of sticking point for us currently is whether or not um, whether or not the problems that we're facing are things that we need to solve or things that should be solved on Wiktionary. Uh, so if these were not subdialects, uh, if they were not, I guess, indented, uh, if they were sisters to Portuguese or Portugal and Brazil here, um, we could, could handle them just fine. Um, so that would be an upstream change that would make our lives easier. Um, and there are other such changes, uh, issues with Persian, Bulgarian, and Lithuanian, which have tickets on our GitHub page. Um, so it's a, it's a sort of constant question for us whether or not the problems that we're facing are things that we need to fix or uh, things that can be fixed on Wiktionary, whether through um, the, I suppose, I don't know what they're called, modules that operate uh, upstream on the Wiktionary itself, or just through manually correcting the entries um, on Wiktionary. So I believe that's pretty much everything that I wanted to say. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Luca. Yes, oh, here are the links. They're not much good now, but I believe the slides will be available later. Thank you very much. Uh, we have three minutes left for some questions. Is there any question? Yeah, I do have a question. Okay, yeah. Uh, thanks, Lucas, for your presentation. You said that you have 38 phones list. Do you mean like phones list for 38 languages? Yes, yeah. Okay, and what oh. are they? I, I didn't understand well. Yeah, it's, it might not be actually 38 different languages because yeah. there, there might be uh, multiple phones lists for the same language, but um, there might be, I'm not sure about that. Uh, but yes, the phones list generally are just a text file containing a list of acceptable phones for a specific language. So let's say uh, American English, you might have yeah. a phones list for all of the appropriate phones in American English, and then okay. a phones list for all of the appropriate phones in uh, British English or perceived pronunciation. Okay, and how, how do you build them? Um, well, interesting you should ask. Um, instructions for the creation of phones lists are available on our GitHub page. Uh, if you go into the data section, uh, you should see a sort of sequence of readmes that hopefully explain that, uh, explain how to create them. Um, but if you'd like uh, specific instructions, feel free to reach out to me or to Kyle Gorman, or just post an issue on the, uh, on the GitHub page saying you'd like to create a, a phones list. All that you really need to contribute is uh, a text file with the acceptable phones in that language. Uh, and that'll work great. Okay, thank you. Hope that answered your question. It does. Okay. <laughs> we have some more questions. If I want to add a language written in this case, what's the best way to start? If you want to add a one? A language. Uh, for a phones list? or just a, a language in general? Um, Do you want to add a language to the library? A the, phone to or, the, or anything, a phone. For phones list, um, the instructions, I think, yeah, the instructions, uh, if you're on the Wikipron GitHub page, and you're interested in adding stuff to either the phones lists or the database or library, uh, then you'll want to click on the data uh, directory. 
and read those corresponding uh, readmes uh, within that directory. Um, if you want to add a language, as in there's a, a language that's not in our scraping database currently, um, then there are also instructions on how to do that on the GitHub page. But basically, you would run a restricted scrape of that language using um, the scraping tools available in wikipron slash data slash scrape, I believe. Uh, but we also, I think, will be updating the database or library sometime this summer. So hopefully we'll catch all the languages that have crossed over 100 pronunciations, 100 entries uh, since our last scrape. OK. Next question. Are you planning to integrate this pronunciation with Wikidata? That is a good question. Um, to which I have no answer. Um, maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> yes, it's not something we've discussed. Um, um, there's a lot of like, you know, cool stuff we could do. Um, people often request features for Wikiprawn and things that we can do with it. Um, but ways to improve it. But our goal with Wikiprawn is actually pretty narrow. It's just to have pronunciation dictionaries, words and pronunciations. Um, all of that extra stuff that people would like, like, oh, maybe some, maybe if we could get the meaning of the word, maybe some etymological information or conjugation information will be useful to us. It certainly might be, but Wikiprawn is not supposed to be the sort of be all end all resource for grapheme to phoneme work or, or anything. Um, Wiktionary itself is already that resource. Uh, and we're just kind of a small slice of what's present on Wiktionary. And that's all we want to be, I guess. So hopefully that almost answers your question by going on a tangent. OK, thank you. Another question from Antoine. I wonder whether discussion have been organized with Wiktionary communities. Could you repeat the question? I wonder whether discussions have been organized with Wiktionary communities. Yeah, we have sort of some limited contact, well, not limited, I mean, somewhat extensive contact with Wiktionary contributors and people in the Wiktionary community. Uh, we have some people whose Wiktionary bots that we've used in the past to make corrections upstream, and that's something that we want to continue to do. But our relationships with the Wiktionary community, I think, ought to uh, deepen. Uh, if we knew that they were changing Japanese before Japanese was changed, that would be helpful. OK. So if we don't have any questions, I will let uh, Jonathan in the next session, session. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. <laughs>